from last year, I did this carburetor, and this carburetor, uh, I didn't take it off. I did a quick and dirty, and it got it running, right? But he needs a thorough cleaning, maybe an entire carburetor replacement, which I have, you know? So uh, we'll see what happens, and then I'll, uh, I'll go and replace the carburetor if so, and I'll just charge him for the carburetor, you know what I mean? So let's start it up right now and see if it works. So this is a decent snowblower that Yard Machine makes. It's actually the bigger one. So it's a Yard Machines by MTD. That's right, MTD sucks. But this actually has a decent eight horsepower Snow King Tecumseh engine in it, 24 wide, 6.4, two reverse as normal. Also has a handle. You never find the handle on any of these. It has electric start, it has some ass gas in it. I'm pretty sure he didn't drain it over the uh, uh, summer. Full choke, high throttle, And it doesn't seem to be priming, which means the carburetor's probably clogged. I don't feel any liquid going, uh, I don't, I feel air, but I don't feel any liquid going to the carburetor. Ooh, some kind of a crinkling, rattling thing. Sounds like there's a screw loose. <laughs> I got a screw loose. Well, now that sound has gone away. The rattling screw is what it sounded like. So it does not start. How about that? That's interesting. Just sprayed some. Choke. As you guys could see, it starts up just fine with some primer, which means that the primer bulb hose is clogged with something or the carburetor is just gunky, especially with the primer hole in there, uh, the primer jet. So it's not able to prime fuel into the carburetor to get it started. You have to help it out with some spray. Once started, it runs well on choke and half uh, choke, but then when you start turning it towards full run with the choke flap almost completely off it starts to surge and with the throttle bringing it down halfway it stalls which means you have a dirty carburetor okay however i am a little concerned about that rattling screw noise that when i was pulling this you could hear it you know and then it went away meaning that it almost sounds like the screw fell out somewhere or is no longer touching an area that is making a sound I hear that sound again. You see that? You hear that? Now it goes away again. I don't know what that sound is. I've never heard that sound before. Now I don't hear it, but it, it's almost like it's part of the recoil, you know? Now it's not there anymore. Choke it again, see. All right, well, anyway, first things first. We're gonna remove the entire carburetor from this assembly, because we just gotta get, a, get to the bottom of it, you know, and I will. Let's put this thing on its service position. Maybe we'll find out what that noise is. I'm actually kind of nervous because I hope the noise isn't inside the engine. You know what I mean? Could it be like the cap to the valves? But would it run if the valve, if the cap was off the valves? You know what I mean? So 
Anyway, let's get that uh, let's get that carburetor off, huh? I forgot we're not doing a quick and dirty. If you want to do a quick and dirty, you put it on the service position. It was leaking gas from the gas tank being on that position, so it's got a decent amount of fuel in it. We're going to remove the entire carburetor today, so I'm going to take the entire assembly off, put it back on its uh, regular side again. And we have a uh, 5 16 over here. It's barely on there. You can hand tighten it or hand loosen it. A little baby squirrel just fell from my tree. Lied there for two minutes or so and then climbed back up the tree again. That's one hell of a drop though. I mean, for the little guy. Muffler's hot. There's another 5 16 on this side to hold the, uh, it's called the heater box. Heater box is on here to protect the carburetor and also isolate the hot air to keep the carburetor um, from freezing. Pull this knob out, just like that, and then weasel this cover off. You could just let it hang or you can disconnect the uh, key kill switch over here. I just let it hang. So the easiest way to remove this carburetor, to come say, right, is to remove the intake manifold, which is right here. There are uh, torque screws, torque bits. Need an extension for that. Just happen to have one right here. And now the linkages. You got the uh, fuel hose going over here. You got one linkage going over there. It's a Z bend. You got the primer hose coming out of here. There's the primer hose right there. Now fuel is going to leak out, so I need to go get a clamp. Got a needle vice grip over there. Remove the hose clamp. Weasel off the fuel line. Because the fuel line's just sticking out a little bit, it's kind of difficult to grab a hold of it and pull it out. really hard this uh, fuel hose this fuel line here as you can see it was so stubborn wouldn't come off it's very brittle so I unfortunately have to replace the entire fuel line coming from here to the fuel tank probably needs a change anyway anyway the linkage is right here just remember where it is this hole right here the one on the right Z-bend, it comes off right there. So remember, it's right there, the dark circle is where it goes. Let's remove the uh, bowl nut over here and see how bad the uh, carburetor bowl is. Half inch wrench to take the uh, jet nut out. Jet nut is clear, hole is clear. As you can see, there's some debris inside. There he goes, right here. See that? The black thing here? That's part of the fuel line. So you knew the fuel line was starting to collapse already because um, the rubber is deteriorating and shredding and making its way into the bowl. 
which in turn clogs the jets. Inside is actually not very dirty. So I think what was preventing uh, it from starting with Prime is that that little black thing was clogging this jet. I'm going to blow out all the holes here. And actually, you see that there's a um, little black little stopper in there. I'm going to remove that black stopper in there, right? And uh, unscrew the um, main, uh, that's not the main jet, the um, uh, idler, the low speed jet right there. This is the idler screw. That's a low speed jet in there. I'm going to take that out and blow it out too. Let me go get some carb cleaner. Take a little screwdriver here. I'm taking this little black stopper off. I know I'm going to lose it. You can see there's a screw right there it's a fixed jet goes in all the way doesn't loosen or tighten it's just fixed and there it is right there looks pretty clear contact cleaner Lucas Oil products this doesn't blow up gaskets Now the hole is clear. Took the uh, float off too. I'm gonna blow stuff into this hole. I'm also gonna blow inside the primer nozzle. Because remember, we had difficulty getting um, it to prime. There's a small little hole right there that nobody knows about. but it seems to be clear because um, carb spray's coming out of it. Up the emulsion tube, main jet. Welsh plug. A lot of varnish around the choke flap. There's a hole. You're not going to be able to see it, but there's a hole right there. Ooh, son of a gun, right in my face. Spraying the jet nut out. It's a good thing I wear glasses. Otherwise, my eye would have been stinging. There's a super small hole over here. You can hardly see it. Got these torch tip cleaners, see? Make sure this hole is clear. And the super small one there, look at that, goes all the way through. Super small hole, right there. Can't even see it. Clear. So, we blew this out completely. Welsh motion um, seat is good blows freely cleaned out that uh, fixed jet right there and that is it I'm gonna shove that jet back in there remember we have to replace the hose the fuel line because it's because the fuel line is done I'm gonna put all this stuff back again I'm uh, draining the gas from the gas tank, taking the clamp off the other side, pulling this fuel line out, and I recall that it is such a pain to get this fuel line fished back in that crevice again. So this is going to probably take me all day because I've done it before.
several times and it always was a pain in the balls. See, I can barely pull it out. How am I gonna put it back in, you know? That area in there is so small. It's difficult to fish it in there. Anyway, I'm gonna find a uh, new hose and cut it to just the same exact length. There's quite a bit of fuel in here, huh? And it looks like it has some stable in there. Got a new fuel line here. Cut the size. Match the original one. Look how much gas was in it. Crazy, huh? That's a lot of gas. So now I'm going to try to fish this thing in there. Uh, looks like it's slowly dripping out, right? And uh, fuel is finally stopped. I'm going to try to fish this line in there, in between the starter. I think I might have to remove the starter just to get it in there. Let's we'll see what happens. Maybe I'll try to do it from the other side. Look at that. You move it around, it still wants to come out. I just I just could not get that, that hose in there, so I had to remove the gas tank. And I still can't see the hose. It's unbelievable how, how, how tight it is in there. I mean... I hope I don't have to take the whole damn engine apart just to get it through there, you know what I mean? But with the fuel tank off, it seems like it's a little bit easier. At least I don't have to take the uh, starter off. That would be a nightmare. But yeah. Ooh, it looks like it's slowly getting through there. I got it, I think. I got it. It's through there. So I put everything back and I'm just putting a couple of uh, cups of this fuel back in there. You know what? Even that one cup is enough. Let's see if it starts. Still don't feel any fuel in the primer. I wonder if the primer's good. but it still kind of surges. I think I might try to put a new carburetor in there. So I've got this new carburetor in stock. It is for the five horsepower or higher kind. This is an eight horsepower one. It has the straight fuel nozzle that comes out just like that one. This is a direct replacement to it, Chinese copy. So I'm just going to replace this carburetor and see if it runs a little bit better.
gotten bigger, whatever, out of whack, you know, it wasn't priming right. This new carburetor I just installed, lower the idle a little bit to the idle screw here. And as you can see, it doesn't surge anymore. It now primes with the primer button and full throttle, no surge. And shuts off no problem so that was it it just needed a new carburetor is all so uh, that was pretty cool we replaced the uh, fuel line replaced the carburetor completely got to put this bracket off of the old one put it back on the new one cover back on that coincide with these holes over here on the bracket I just put on and a bunch of other screws where is that screw always looking for screws oh look you think this was the cause of the recoil starter making that clinkly noise came right out of there sitting right there that was the noise. So there was a nail right where the recoil starter was that was making that noise. Problem solved. So I'll just tighten up these bolts and add some new Earl into this baby. And Scott, your snowblower is ready for the harsh winter that awaits us. So I checked the oil. There's almost no oil in here. It's really weird. We're putting SAE 5W30 because this is a winter machine for temperatures below 32 degrees. <laughs> or some somewhere's around there. It's not an exact science. <laughs> oil guys would be like, sure it's an exact science. Give or take a few degrees here and there, a few weight here and there. Just fill it and check the levels every few goes. From my friends over at Lucas Oil. Final thing is put this put this knob back on. got oil in it now, it's right on the money, got full choke, full throttle, got gas in it, build up the oil, bet the front bucket back into shape, prime, Snowbird is now completely tuned up. It's ready for the winter. The snowblower is from my neighbor Scott. Hope you're satisfied with the work what we did today. It was fun to get into a snowblower for a change, you know what I mean? 
After all, I am mowers and blowers, you know what I mean? You gotta do a blower once in a while. Thanks a lot for joining me on today's episode, guys. We'll see you guys next time on Mowers and See you guys next time on Hey, if you guys enjoyed the video, remember to give me a like. Also, comment below. Subscribe. Remember, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. It's free, right? Also, hit that little bell. That way you'll get post notifications whenever there's a new video and you won't miss out on any of them. Remember to follow my Instagram and Facebook, as well as if you'd like to donate a dollar or two, paypal.me slash mowers and blowers. Really appreciate all the support. Also, to keep the videos coming every day, support the channel. Bye.